Hello and welcome to another session, uh, which is which will be on states in React. So uh, from this session onwards, we'll be diving one level deeper into the these React concepts. <clears throat> and from uh, this point onwards, uh, see this particular concept that we are going to see regarding uh, the state in React and regarding the hooks that we have in React and whatever we'll we'll be seeing in the upcoming sessions. So this is um, actually this is the starting or the core stuff due to which uh, many aspiring React developers they give up on React. Okay, so I'm not going to sugarcoat my words right here. So this particular uh, concepts, even though they are super easy, you'll be able to uh, grasp them in just uh, one go. But the problem is. That these uh, kind of these topics do not stick with you okay so in order to keep them uh, in your mind and in order to have them in permanently in your toolbox I will recommend you to rigorously practice these whatever I provide in uh, the code sandbox links the tutorials or the practice sessions that we have honestly and like give them with uh, your hundred percent and apart from that all uh, be curious about what all scenarios can be there and what all can be uh, like added and deleted and modified in order to generate the same results so basically you can play with these these uh, topics with these tools at hand in order to grasp it uh, in a better way so the main point that i want to convey by all this is be focused while we study them okay so let's see what they are so state in react what basically we have studied up till now is like components uh, how to extract them how to send stuff how to send stuff uh, to our components via properties we declare these attributes and by uh, using react props we are able to do um, a number of things as we've seen up till now but the problem is that up till now our website is still not very interactive okay um, and what basically we can uh, start in order to study what state are you can basically understand that by this particular equation that we have right here that the ui so what is ui it is basically the layout or the first thing that you see the the uh, visibility or let's say the appearance of the website that you have um, uh, on which user visits so that particular part of your uh, screen of your website is called UI and the state that we have so what is state we'll see that uh, see that in uh, a few moments so UI is basically a function of this state which means that whatever we see on our UI as react developers that will vary that will change that will adapt to a particular variable or a, va a variable condition called state so to use a better anal analogy in order to help you understand that we can take the most famous example of uh, these three states of matter right so we all know that even these ice or gas or water which means this will be steam all of these are precisely the same thing all right they are h2o they are water as we know it but how are they appearing different to us in uh, different scenarios okay so basically the thing is that even though they appear different to us but they have a particular variable they have a particular condition over which their appearance is depends on and that particular condition is temperature all right so let's say if we uh, take down the temperature below zero degrees like minus 10 degrees celsius then we'll see that this particular the state of this thing that we know as h2o it will turn into solid or ice if we vary the temperature and we increase it uh, to keep it between 0 to 100 
degree Celsius, then it will turn into water and we will see it in a liquid form. So same thing, but due to the change of a particular variable, now it is appearing as, as completely another thing to us. Same applies to the gaseous state as well. So this, this uh, particular analogy can be applied to our UI as well, which means that based on a particular condition or a particular set of condition, the, the appearance that we have, it will change. And how we do it, we can uh, understand from an example. Let's say the very basic one in which uh, we have a particular text and we want that text to, uh, we want to generate a strike through text. That means we have a line uh, striking through the entire word based on some, based on some condition. So up till now we have studied much about the conditional operators. So let's see how we can do that. Let's head over to code sandbox now. So we are inside our code sandbox now. Now in this, we have a simple screen in front of us. Uh, what it does is we have this particular text right here, sample text. And uh, as we discussed, we want to put a line across it, which we call a strike through. And we wanted to do it based on a particular condition. Okay. But initially, uh, I hope you remember how do we apply inline styling in React. We studied it rigorously in the uh, concern session. So first of all, remembering that we are inside a JSX file and not a JavaScript file. So we up put these two curly braces right here. And then whatever styling that we want to apply, we have to mention it as key value pairs. That if you want to uh, modify your font to something, then th that particular font and the particular value that you want to put, they should be put there in the form of a JavaScript object with key, let's say in this particular case is text decoration and the value what we wanted to achieve is line through. So you can see now we have a line appearing across our text that we wanted to achieve and using inline CSS styling, we are able to do it like this. Now in order to avoid our confusion because of this, these two lines, let's take this entire object out and let's say we call it decor. We mentioned that this object looks like this and we simply make the style equals to inside these curly braces because we, because we are writing JavaScript and then we simply mention this particular object of ours. Now let's create a condition based on which we wanted to change the appearance of our UI. So let's say we have a variable called condition and initially it's true. So now we want to make this code, uh, modify this code such that if this particular condition is true, we want a line appearing through this particular text. And if this particular condition is false, we don't want to apply any such styling and let the text appear as it was initially. So we know that since we are inside these curly braces, we are all we are only uh, left with writing expressions inside this. And if you have studied the previous session sincerely, then you can see that this is a per perfect condition to apply ternary operator. So applying our logics of conditional rendering that we studied, we sim simply put this particular Boolean right here, which is our condition. And since it is a Boolean, we don't write, we don't need to uh, like explicitly mention that this is equals to true, and then use the styling equals to this particular object of ours. And th if this is not equals to true, so we can simply remove this and we can write it like this that if this particular condition is true, we want the styling equals to this, which is text declaration should be equals to line through. And if this particular condition is false, we don't want to put any such condition over our uh, text here. Okay. Now, if you see it closely, this particular style that we have, the programming that we are doing in which 
our particular UI is dependent on a state variable that we have right here. The sort of state that we discussed just now about uh, by taking into consideration the three states of matter. In that particular case, the state was the temperature. And right here, this state is a condition, is a boolean over which the appearance of our UI is based. So the style of programming in which we are declaring how our UI should look like under different conditions, under different state, this particular style is called as declarative programming. Okay. So that was a little bit of a theoretical part. Now let's say I copy this and paste it like this and let's comment this entire out. So now some of you might be wondering that uh, since we have something here, so where is the counter of this, right? Where yeah, if we have yin, where is yan? So the yan in our case is called imperative programming. Imperative programming. Okay. So what imperative programming is it? It's basically the, the style of programming in which we implicitly code in every step of ours, in which we forcefully um, apply stuff in our in our, in our code and we, we basically implicitly access stuff and then we modify it so let me uh, make your memories much more clear let's say if i write something like document dot get element by id and then we mention the id of the element that we want to use and then using the subsequent dot operators we did something something so i hope you remember this is our plain vanilla javascript and if we wanted to solve this particular problem of ours or achieve the same results using the imperative programming technique then we would have to uh, basically get hold of this particular element our html element with the id of root and then further tapping into the style property of that <coughs> and then further tapping into the text decoration uh, attribute of our style styling in this then we have to modify it in case we want to put a strike through over here so first of all let's remove <coughs> these and let's say i remove all of this too and get us back to the initial version first of all let's do a little bit modification in our return statement because now we are going to write multiple lines so let's wrap them inside a div so let's say i create a button right here and let's say this button is called strike karo let's apply the closing button tag and then i am writing i am including a listener on click with this button of ours and as soon as i click on this particular button i am calling a function called strike so let's define this strike function of ours now inside this style function i am going to use basically the plain vanilla javascript of mine i'll be getting hold of the element with the id of a root i'm going to tap into the styling of that and then i'll be further tapping into the text decoration property and i'll make it equals to line through like this so now if this particular button is pressed then the particular text that you have it will have it will uh, you'll see that a particular line starts appearing over this all right and what if if we want to unstrike this let's create another button for that paste it like this let's say we call it strike remove and for that we create another function called unstrike let's copy this strike function of ours modify it a little bit so if we call it unstrike and if we see in this particular case if the condition was true then we were equaling our style to this particular object that means text decoration was line through 
And if we didn't want it to apply this, then we were simply making it equal to null. So let's simply change this much by making it null like this. Hit save. And then you can see if you click on this particular button, strike karo. So a line will start appearing over, our, over your text. And now it's a strike through text. And if you click on this particular button, then the line is gone. It appears, disappears, comes and goes like this. All right. So you can see that a simple thing that we were achieving so easily by using the declarative style of programming, we had to lines, we had to write so many lines of code in order to achieve it using the imperative style. Now, some of you might be thinking that why not use that um, the the altering of that. Uh, boolean in this case as well uh, very well then let's uh, let's assume that we have a condition here which is initially false and what we basically do is whenever we are clicking on, on this button all right so now see that we are not explicitly what we are trying to do is we will not manually change this particular condition since you saw that by clicking on this we are able to make this line appear here and by removing this we are able to make this line disappear then why not alter this particular condition by the use of these buttons right and then simply using this style of programming we can um, make the line appear and disappear right let's try and do that so if i click on strike i want to make the condition true let's comment this out and if i am calling unstrike i want to make this particular condition false back again and let's uh, copy this whoops let's copy this until here nope like this i copy this and i replace it with this like this and let's put this object here with these key and value pairs all right so initially let's save it uh remove this comment this out as well so initially our condition is false and we are what we are hoping to achieve is that if we click on this particular button then this condition will be turned true and then since we are applying that old style so it should simply uh run this particular command and it should remove the it should apply the styling and vice versa with this particular button but if you click over these no matter how many times you will see that this doesn't work now why is that so it, it it appears that what basically happens is that initially we were explicitly changing this particular condition all right we were manually changing it so this particular entire code base was changing and then your website was again reloading based on your new code and then that that line was coming and going so it was similar to writing this um, particular up, applying this styling by writing this code right here and then removing it. It was somewhat similar to that only. But now since we uh, when when you have a particular application and some user is using it, so he is not going to mess around with your code, all right? He only has this particular part with this with with him, okay? And if he wanted to uh make a line appear here and disappear then he only have the use of these two buttons right here and theoretically we wanted to achieve the same by writing this particular logic right here now the reason why it is why is it, it is not working is because these elements whatever you have on this page they are already rendered okay and even though if you see that if you click on this particular button then this particular course actually did run all right it actually turned the condition equals to true but the problem was that whatever you had right here it was it is showing the older version of whatever you wrote and this particular element of yours this particular line of yours is not re-rendering all right now if we want to achieve what we have what we uh, if you want to actually implement what we hope to achieve by writing this, then 
we have to understand something called react hooks all right so basically what react hooks does is it hooks through or it catches hold of your state of react which in this case is our condition and then it can it modifies or edit or whatever you want to do with your particular state and it re-renders that particular component okay so in order to achieve what we hope to by writing all of this and still not uh, <laughs> seeing this work we have to study react hooks that was the basic introduction of what state is in react i hope you were able to understand it so it's a little bit of uh, let's say i'll not say a very difficult topic but a little bit of a complex topic if you just um, understand it step by step if you keep uh, like basically practice it along the line that we have uh, whatever practice sessions we'll be having and build your muscle memory and the basic foundational knowledge of what it is and why it was used why it was uh, required in react you'll be having no issues in understanding that but most of the people do hate react because of these react hooks and states and all so in order to understand what react hooks are we will be seeing them in the upcoming session and regarding this particular session that will be all from my end i'll see you in the next one